Hi there, I'm Jeff Johnson, CoBank's Digital Infrastructure Economist, and I'm joined today with my colleague, Terry Vishwanath. She's the bank's energy economist. And Terry and I are gonna talk about an interesting situation happening in Ohio uh, regarding a data center rate settlement case. You may be aware that in Ohio, there is a very public and protracted dispute going on between one of the country's largest utilities, AEP, and the hyperscale operators. So think about Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, and Google. And, and this, this dispute revolves around what represents a data center's fair share of the payments needed for system upgrades to facilitate power supply in Ohio. As a starting point, Terry, talk about why this particular rate dispute and the various components of a possible settlement are important for our respective industries to take note of. Hey, Jeff, the Ohio dispute is amongst the regulatory battles that are going going on right now, and it may set precedent for how the U.S. power industry addresses data center electricity demand. Interesting. So, hey, let's take a a closer look at Ohio and, and just see how this accelerated data center demand is impacting the state. So according to AEP, data center demand in Ohio increased sixfold by 2020 to 2024. So it went from 100 to 600 megawatts. And this demand growth is really just getting started. There are 50 pending requests from data center customers seeking electric service at more than 90 sites. So so this could represent upwards of 30,000 megawatts of additional load. That's enough to power 20 million households. And that additional demand would more than triple the utility's previous peak load in 2023. Yeah, that's right, Jeff. So AP took the time, they filed their original uh, submission uh, with Ohio's regulators back in May of this year. So sort of what they wanted the, this new class of customers, they actually identified two up front, but new class of customers, data center customers, and what they would have to pay. That's really interesting, and it, it actually makes a lot of sense. But hey, Terry, kind of walk us through that filing in a little bit more detail, because I think, I think you're onto something there. Yeah, you know, when they first came out, and this was May of this year, the filing was relatively sparse. And so here's the way it goes, is that, um, you know, the the ability to serve uh, the customers of Ohio, um, they have to file, you know, a a rate proceeding with the regulators. And so they did that and it was relatively sparse. And then there's an opportunity for stakeholder comment. And so that stakeholder comment took place. It was scheduled original comments by, by June 25th, and then an opportunity to respond to those comments by July 8th. Now that's all normal. That's the way it normally works. And then something profoundly unusual happened. A separate filing. Now, the filing comes out from Microsoft Alphabet, that's Google's parent, Meta and Amazon, and other data center firms. They they proposed an alternate rate filing on what they were prepared to pay AEP. And they called that submission a settlement. Um, And what was really interesting is is that on this proposal, this rate proposal, uh, which was much more complete than the original sparse one, There were signatures from Amazon, Microsoft, Google Meta, a consortium of other data center owners, Retail Energy Supply Association, the manufacturers in the state, and a few, interesting enough, electricity suppliers uh, that appeared to have were granted standing in the case, such as Constellation. But really important, Jeff, the signature that was missing was actually AEP's utility that actually is a party um, and it's supposed to be actually owning the process. so shortly following that, mm. AP Ohio's president and chief operating officer came out with a statement noting just how unusual that process was, the, the filing, and said, hey, it's unprecedented to present a settlement to the Public Utility Commission of Ohio that hasn't been supported by the, you know, the regulator itself or the utility that are initially raised these concerns. And then two weeks after sort of making that statement, AEP filed its own version of what it calls its settlement. Now, the administrative law judge refers to these as stipulation one and then stipulation two. And so AEP's version, um, and, and what was interesting, looks a lot like what the data centers actually filed, but there's some really important changes here. 
um, and important, you know, on that particular filing, once again, it, it talks about being a settlement, but notably absent were signatures from Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Meta, and the consortium of other data center owners. So the actual consumers that are going to be impacted by this rate structure. Well, that's, that's really something. Pretty unusual, I'm sure, uh, for folks in Ohio. But, but Terry, you, you mentioned that there were some important uh, provisions that both of these, I don't know, I guess we'll call them settlements. I guess they're really not, but settlements in quotations, some important pr provisions that they had in common. So maybe you can kind of help us understand and walk us through elements of AEP's filing. Absolutely. So I, I do think this is important. We need to take, um, you know, you need to take stock of, of what appeared in this last filing by AEP. Now, most importantly, um, they start off with establishing this new customer classification. They just came back and settled on one term. It's called data centers, and it's data centers of size, meaning these data centers are going to have loads that are going to be 25 megawatts or greater. Now, you would think that deciding who was going to be impact, impacted by this, this rate case proceeding would not be a contentious part of, of the filing process. But as it turns out, it actually is. The data center customers, you know, at the heart of this, this case, you know, actually want to be treated like any other um, commercial or industrial CNI account. And they wanted the threshold to be a little higher. They wanted to be 50 megawatts. They thought that that was the threshold that would actually trigger these sort of system costs. Um, and they also wanted an important stipulation here. They also wanted to make sure that, hey, their relative size, um, they wanted to have AEP in order to be part of the rate filing or this rate case. They also wanted to say, hey, AEP, you've got to prove that we're actually causing a transmission constraint, meaning we're imposing cost onto others simply by the size and, and us showing up on the scene. And you know, they also didn't want to have, you know, they, they thought the special treatment. So in terms of being even called data centers, so they wanted sort of a classification to be energy intensive customers that doesn't appear in the filing. So starting off, just agreeing to who's actually covered by this rate case, important. Um, the second part is that they wanted to have a uniform sign up process for these data centers. Now, this is important. And we kind of agree on in, in terms of the data centers that would be covered by this. You know, they've been in this moratorium, this data center queue, if you will. And so to get yourself out of the process, we start with there's a five step process. The first of which is there's going to be a cost of service study for which you, data center, will have to pay. And, and so here, there seems to be agreement, but AEP gives sort of a wide range of cost for that study, saying it's going to be somewhere between $10,000 and $100,000. And as you would imagine, the data center said, well, we'd prefer to have the lower end of that range. So they Certainly. wanted to set it <laughs> right at yeah. a flat $10,000. Oh, wow. um, and then the next is after we do that study, second step is that AEP has to develop a service plan. How are they going to service these? And it has to come out within 60 days. So it's really quick, like, okay, now that we have the study, what are we going to do? And what's the service plan? Got it. 60 days here. And then third, AEP is going to present the data center, the customer here with a letter of agreement and including the requirement that the, the data center has to pay 100% of the cost of service, the distribution lines, and then an outline contribution and aid of construction fee schedule, which will be the infrastructure required. And so that's sort of set out. Um, and then also like the electric service agreement that will run for a period of at least 10 upward to 12 years. So that's what is handed to the customer. The customer has 60 days, step four, to sign off or risk getting be, being placed back in that queue and, and waiting. And then finally, energizing that data center will occur. Now, notably here, and this is a problem, all of the costs are paid up front, but we don't know the timing of this, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a bit problematic. The affiliate filing also includes a demand charge. It's 85% of their contract capacity, so their, their needs um, defines a load ramp parameter, so kind of take or pay provisions over a four-year period establishes behind the meter generation limits and requirements, and then limits the contract assignment. So you can get out of this, sort of, sort of. We've got 25% of the, the capacity in which you can actually assign to another data center. So those are some of the provisions that 
that are outlined that I think are important for us to consider. Well, that's a great job summarizing all those. There's a lot of sort of meat on the bone, so to speak, uh, that they've come up with. So uh, great job uh, walking through that. But Terry, let's let's talk a little bit about the the demand charge and the load ramp schedule, because I think those are a couple of terms that for those who aren't living and breathing uh, this industry every day, you know, they might not appreciate the nuances between those two. So maybe you could just spend a couple of minutes kind of drilling down a little bit deeper on those two particular areas. Yeah, no problem. So, Jeff, the demand charge is really a fee, and it's added to an electricity bill, typically for a CNI account. And it's typically a look back. We look at the highest amount of power used at any, any single point in time during a billing cycle. It's really a system charge that we're going to be there. You know, the capacity, the the system's going to be there when you need it, and we're going to have a fee to make sure that we are there. It's a, we consider it sort of a capacity charge um, in the wholesale markets. And then the load is, as it sounds, it's, it's the electricity you use. But in this case, you know, Jeff, we don't want to commit to you. So if you say that you are going to be a 500 megawatt data center, you know, and, and we have, you know, we're going to charge you for the, as I mentioned, uh, in this case, 85% is, is the demand charge here for the capacity. Um, But we also want to make sure that load shows up when you say it's going to show up. So in year one, uh, under this agreement, um, you know, we want to make sure that that you're going to pay, um, you know, at least 50 percent of the load. It's 500, 250 actually shows up in year one, 50 percent. Year two, it's 65 percent. Year three, it's 80 and year four, 90 percent. Now, the data center uh, stipulation um, or proposal Landed at the 90% at year four, but the scale was was a little bit more generous. Only 30% of the load had to show up in year one, 50% year two, et cetera. So a little difference on the load schedule there. And then, Terry, you also mentioned some provisions regarding behind the meter generation. So maybe you could walk us through you know, what that looks like. In this case, AP is looking for something very specific. And and what they want to say, so if it, once again, it's a 500 megawatt data center, but I say, you know what, I'm only going to require 250 megawatts from you, AP, because I've got 250 megawatts of behind the meter generation that I'm going to serve myself with. And AP said, well, let's make sure that you're not really, really having, you know, you have a system that you say can produce 250 megawatts. But in reality, you're coming to us with 500 megawatts. We want to make sure you, that that the generation you have behind the meter is reliable. It can do what you say it can do, and that you're not coming to us with greater than the contracted capacity. And that was a really interesting um, because we're going to make sure you're held to the same standard. We have capacity that. Um, if you get paid a capacity payment, especially in the wholesale markets, you need to make sure that that plant, that unit is operational. So when we have a cold snap, better make sure it's it's there. We're going to be charged. In this case, that provision, a wholesale um, ISO type of provision is moving downstream and is now, um, you know, now the utility is looking for the customer's generation to be there in a reliable manner as it would be required uh, in its, you know, as, as it participates in an ISO. I mean, so w- where do we go from here? <laughs> I mean, we've got these sort of dueling settlement filings in front of us and, and what's next? The, the PUC will then take a look um, and decide whether to deny grants or alter, you know, the, um, these filings. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll actually have a rate filing. Um, and there's a couple of important considerations. So I, I really liked, there was testimony that that Google provided, uh, Brendan Batts, that made some really important points that I think that likely the PUC will consider, um, which is, you know, one, to be able to make sure that, um, you know, that these customers are showing up and prepaying you know, quite a bit of money, and they should be provided with a reasonable timetable for when the energy is going to be available. And I think that's important. You know, the customers are going to face substantial payments for capacity without any assurance 
uh, with regard to the actual availability of that service. And so we probably will have more detail there. Another point is that, um, you know, the concern that, you know, do we have a discriminatory focus on, on data centers? So I think that this idea of energy intensive customers, but, you know, Jeff, I have to be honest with you, what other energy intensive customer in Ohio is showing up and requesting 30 gigawatts of electricity, right? So there's that. But hopefully by year end, we're going to have a little bit more clarity. And I think that what's occurring in Ohio is is probably going to prove to be a blueprint or a template for for other states. Well, fascinating times. I mean, they truly are unprecedented. I mean, that word gets thrown around a lot, I think. Um, But these truly are unprecedented times. And we will certainly uh, keep an eye on these developments as we move forward. So thank you so much, Terry. Yeah, my pleasure.